we do every week. A big shout out to everybody watching online. Come on. Thank you guys for joining us on all of the platforms on which we have that option for people to join us. Thank you. If you're watching because you're thinking about coming and checking us out in person, it is better in person, right, church? And so uh, we can't wait to meet you. We just kicked off last week a new series on heaven, and I love that topic. I'm looking forward to going to that place yeah. called heaven. And um, here's the way the series is working. I've given you a place on our website where you can submit your questions, accth.us slash heaven. And what I'm doing in this series is I'm taking the most asked questions and from Scripture, we're doing our best to answer some of those questions that you have. And it's been fun, and you guys have really participated. We've gotten lots and lots. I have pages of questions. So uh, before we get started, let me share a story with you that I read this week. I read a story about a guy who died and went to heaven. And he opened his eyes, and he was standing in front of the pearly gates. And Peter had a clipboard and a pen, and he walked to him, and he welcomed him. He said, but before you can go into heaven, I have to do a quick interview. So I've got a few questions. And the guy says, okay. And he said, uh, when you were on earth, uh, were you a religious man? Uh, in other words, did you attend religious services on a regular basis? And the man said, no, uh, I, I didn't. And Peter said, that's bad. And he, he marked something on the clipboard and he said, strike one. And then, uh, this is a joke, by the way, all right? Um, <laughs> Some of y'all can see you're getting nervous. Uh, he says, second question, uh, he said, were you a generous man on earth? He said, did you uh, give to charitable causes? Did you give to your church or did you feed the hungry, the poor? Uh, were, you, were you a generous man? The man said, no. And Peter said, that, that's, that's strike two, that's bad. And he wrote on the clipboard and then he said, uh, did you do any good deeds when you were on earth? And the guy said, well, he said, I... I did come out of the grocery store, and he said there was an elderly woman in the parking lot being harassed by this group of thugs. And he said they were pushing her around, and one pulled her purse off her shoulder, one ripped her necklace off her neck, one pulled her watch off, one shoved her down. And he said, I started screaming. I said, stop. He said, I, I pushed my way in, pushed those thugs out of the way, helped the woman to her feet. And I looked at every one of them, and I said, you give her her stuff back now. Peter said, well, that's impressive. He said, when did this happen? The guy said, about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Some of y'all will get it later, later in the afternoon. Someone this week, let's pray right now, let's do that. <laughs> Father, thank you so much, thank you so much for loving us. Loving us so much that you sent your son to die in our place so that we could experience you in this life and forever in the life to come. We thank you for that place that you are preparing for us, the place we call heaven. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. So someone submitted a question this week, and it was not the most asked question, but it was a question that I've had. And it's a question that I've spent some time over the last few years researching from Scripture myself. And so I just have to answer this question uh, because I just think it's a fun thing to study in Scripture. And so uh, next weekend's Mother's Day, and we have a special guest speaker that's going to be here for Mother's Day, and then we'll get right back into the series. So here's the question. The question that was submitted is, why does the Bible use the word heavens, plural? Now I know, again, not the most asked question, but I love the question. It's one I've had and one uh, I find quite interesting. I want to show you a passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul writes, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether he was in the body, I don't know. Whether he was out of the body, he had an out-of-body experience. I don't know if that was the case or not, but I know such a one who was caught up into the third heaven. I want to say those two words together on the count of three. One, two, three. Third heaven. I want you to remember that. I know one, such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise. Let's say that word together on the count of three. One, two, three. Paradise. 
And he heard inexpressible words which are not lawful for anyone to utter. Now I want you to notice that Paul called paradise, the place we call heaven, he called it the what heaven? The third heaven. I want to show you a verse in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18. Behold the heaven, and the heaven of heavens, plural, is the Lord. Behold the heaven, and the heaven of heavens is the Lord. We see this reference to heavens, plural, all over Scripture. To be exact, the word heavens is referred to 168 times in Scripture. That's quite a bit, right? Uh, look at Genesis 1.1. This is the first verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the, what's the word? Heavens. Not heavens, singular, but heavens, plural, and the earth. Look at verse 9 of Genesis 1. Then God said, let the waters under the, what's the word? Heavens, plural, be gathered together into one place, talking about the ocean, the sea, and let the dry ground appear out of that water. In Scripture, we see three different heavens mentioned. I'm going to give them to you, and then I'll give you where they are mentioned in Scripture. The the first heaven mentioned in Scripture is the earth's atmosphere. And we see this in Genesis 1, verses 7 through 9. God, God called our atmosphere the first heaven. The second heaven mentioned in Scripture is what we call outer space. Now, you might be asking, well, where does the Bible call what we call outer space the second heaven? I'll show it to you. It's Genesis chapter 22, verse 17. God took Abraham outside in the night sky. He said, look up. And and notice what he says. He says, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of what? Heaven. So, have, so, so the Bible gives us three heavens mentioned. The first is the earth's atmosphere, Genesis 1. The second is what we call outer space, Genesis 22. And then we just read, we started off with the third heaven. That's the one Paul talked about. He said, I know someone, many say it was Paul himself, who was caught up into the third heaven, paradise, and he saw things just, you can't define it in words. Throughout the Old Testament, I'm going to ask you to lean in right now, okay? I'm going to, we're going to go somewhere really fun today. Throughout the Old Testament and into the New, God's people worship first in a place called the tabernacle and then in the temple. And in Hebrews chapter 8, we read that the tabernacle and the temple were shadows of heavenly things. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 8, it's verse 5, and in Acts chapter 7, verse 44, the Bible tells us that God put Moses in the cleft of the rock, and then God passed before Moses, and God showed Moses incredible things. Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, the first five books of our Bible. What God showed him in that moment was what we have in the first five books. But then according to Hebrews 8 and Acts chapter 7, God also let him peek into heaven. And then Moses was to create a tabernacle, which later became a permanent place, a temple, and he made it based off what he saw in heaven. So heaven became the object and the tabernacle or the temple became the shadow of that object. Are you on the same page with me? Yeah. And the church said, Amen. All right. The tabernacle and the temple were divided into how many parts? You want to take a guess? How many heavens are there mentioned in Scripture? Three. You want to know how many parts there were to the tabernacle and the temple? Three. Giving you a hint right here. Three. Just like there are three different heavens mentioned, there are three different parts of the tabernacle, and every part of the tabernacle coincided with that heaven. Wow. 
the outer court, that was the first part of the tabernacle and the temple. The inner court, that was the second part of the tabernacle. And then deep into the heart of the tabernacle was the holy of holies where God's presence dwelled. God always has a pattern for how He does things. He uses earthly things to illustrate heavenly things. And there is absolutely, as we study this today, absolutely no way that God could have not written the Bible because only God could orchestrate the things that He orchestrated throughout Scripture. I want to break down each part of the tabernacle and let's look at how it coincides with that heaven. The outer court. The outer court was just that. It was the outer court. It had no roof on it. It was open, open air. So if you went to the tabernacle and you were in the outer court, it looked just like the sky because you were looking at the sky. It was bright. It was open. You saw the birds of heaven flying around. There were people. It was the part of the tabernacle, the first part, that corresponded with our first heaven, the earth's atmosphere. Are you on the same page with me? Then if you were to go into that second part of the tabernacle, the inner court, the atmosphere changed drastically. Number one, you were inside, and it was encased in darkness. There was only a little bit of light, and that light flickered, and it was the light of the menorah. Seven candles on the menorah, and the light on top of those candles flickering. But it was encased in darkness. The only color in the inner court were the, were the colors from the curtain or the veil that separated the inner court the second place, from the third place, which was the Holy of Holies. And the curtain, here's what's fascinating to me. The curtain, if you look at Exodus 26, I don't have time to read all of these to you, but Exodus 26, verse 31, Exodus 36, verse 35, and 2 Chronicles 3, 14. In those three places in Scripture, we read what the colors of the veil were. Here were the colors. Purple, blue, crimson, and a white, a little bit of white linen thread that were all in the veil. So picture this. You go from this bright outer court, which coincides with the earth's atmosphere, right? Then you step into the inner court, and it was dark. There was just a little bit of light flickering, and there were these Little pieces of color, blue, purple, crimson, a little bit of white. And what does that inner court coincide with? Which heaven? What we call outer space. Are you with me, people? Yeah. I know we're a little deep today, but check this out. I'm going to give you a picture of what the inner court looked like. Oh, there it is. Voila. <laughs> this is what the inner court would have looked like. These were the colors. There was these little... Angelic beings, a little bit of white here and there. And remember, you would have saw the flickering of light from the menorah. In April of 1990, NASA launched into space what we call the Hubble Space Telescope. And since 1990, Hubble's been taking pictures of outer space and sending them back to us. I want to show you a picture just opposed or laid over top of that of outer space. Now, is it just me, or do the colors in outer space, according to Hubble, look just like the colors? Only God could write a book like this. Right. Only God. There is nobody that can put together a book like this. It's amazing, the more I study God's Word, 30 years now, I've been studying God's Word, and the more I study it, the more I just have to sit back and say, Oh my God, God is amazing. People, some of the questions that came in over the last couple of weeks is, I was, honestly, I wasn't surprised because I've asked the question before. And the question was, uh, and it's asked more than once, is will heaven be boring? I'm going to tell you what, heaven is the opposite of boring. I want you to think about this. We're made in God's image. God gave you your taste buds 
And there's food in heaven. We talked about that last week. Thank God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo, there's food in heaven. Praise God. God gave you the ability to love. God gave you the emotion of joy. Excitement is a gift from God. Your family is a gift from God. The things that you enjoy, your passions, your gifts, your talents, God gave you all of those. Heaven is you getting to be you at your maximum potential minus sorrow, minus pain, minus depression, minus the toxic emotions and thoughts that battle us in this life. Heaven is total utopia and then some. It's amazing to me. Three heavens mentioned in Scripture, three parts of the tabernacle. Acts 7, Hebrews 8 says that what Moses put together was a shadow of what heaven is like. Now there was a third part of the tabernacle. And it was called the Holy of Holies and that's where God's presence resided. And we know that that part of the tabernacle and later the temple, it was completely encased in gold. Everything in that part was plated in pure gold. And then you turn to the back of the Bible and you read in Revelation chapter 21 that heaven, the third heaven, paradise, was it covered with? Gold. That God even paves the streets with pure gold. Now the other thing that's interesting to me about the Holy of Holies is there was absolutely no natural light in the Holy of Holies. No sunlight, no moonlight, there was no light. Now in the inner court there was the menorah, the candles flickered and provided light. In the outer court we had our atmosphere and the sun illuminating the outer court. But in the Holy of Holies, if you read your Bible, God's presence illuminated that room. Now, you go to Revelation 21, and you go to Revelation 22, and the Bible says that in heaven, paradise, what we call heaven, there is no sun. For the glory of the Lord illuminates that city. Oh my goodness! Only God could put together a book like this. So the temple and the tabernacle were a shadow of what heaven is like three heavens mentioned in scripture, three parts of the temple or the tabernacle. Growing up, uh, I have a brother, he's five years younger than I am. And growing up, uh, our parents, they always went over the top on our birthday and on Christmas. Uh, and my mom, she could keep a secret. Like uh, if, if mom and dad, they really got you something that they, were, that they were proud of, my mom, you'd never know it until the day that they unveiled it. My dad, on the other hand, was quite different. If my dad, if they got us something that they were really pumped about, my dad could not keep it quiet. <laughs> like, like, like he just wanted to give it to us early. Like we started this tradition as we got older where on Christmas Eve, we got to open up one gift. Anybody have a tradition like that? Anybody have a parent or somebody in your family? They just can't keep their mouth shut. You know what I'm talking about? So, so, so my dad would be like, come on, oh, come on, let us, let's, let's open them up now, you know. It'd be like, it'd be like Thanksgiving and they're ready to, he's just ready to bring them all out, you know. He could not keep a secret. He always wanted to give us clues and hints and he'd say, hey, you want a hint, you want a hint, you want a hint, you want a, you want a, you want a clue, you want a clue? One, one time for Christmas, I love G.I. Joe. Anybody have any G.I. Any Joe fans in here? Anybody grow up in the 80s? Come on. And, and I, I went in my mom and dad's closet to look for something, and I found a stash of G.I. Joes. <laughs> my mom said, I'm taking them everyone back. And then she showed me a receipt and made me think she took them all back. I was heartbroken. My dad said, she didn't take them back. She didn't take them back. <laughs> My dad always wanted me to, he always wanted to give us a hint, a little glimpse. Can I tell you that we have a heavenly father who said, I want to give you a peek, just a peek. I want to give you a little glimpse. I got something for you and I just can't hold it in. Here's a peek, a shadow of what it's going to be. Oh, I tell you, I can't wait 
to go to heaven. Now, let me give you some good news right here. Um, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, was hanging on Golgotha on a hill, on a cross for our sin. Now, a couple of things that's fascinating to me is the high priest at that time, on the same day every year on Passover, you for your family would bring a lamb to be sacrificed. And that lamb would serve as one that would take your sins upon itself and it, it, it in its innocence would give its life for your sins. It was symbolic that one day there will be a Messiah that will come and give his life for our sin. Well, the priest would take the blood of that lamb and one time a year the priest would get to go into that holy of holy, that, that inner place that resembled paradise for us. He would go in one time a year and he would take the blood of every lamb and douse it on top of the Ark of the Covenant. We talked about that few weeks ago and how the lid was the mercy seat. Well, when the high priest took the last basin of blood and he put it on that seat, it was always at the same time every year, he would throw that basin of blood on that mercy seat and then he would say three words. You want to know what they are? It is finished. Now picture the great high priest, Jesus Christ, on the cross... And at that same moment, he looks toward the temple, knowing that there's a high priest in that place that no one can go to but the high priest, and he can only go there one time a year. Jesus glances in that direction, and Jesus, simultaneous to the high priest, says, It is finished. And the Bible says that the earth started to quake. Can you imagine being the high priest? in the temple, and all of a sudden that veil that separated us from God's presence was ripped from the top all the way down to the bottom. No wonder people said, surely we've just crucified the Son of God. Man, thank God. So, so here's what God was saying. God was saying, look, there's no more restrictions here. I'm opening up heaven for you. Whosoever will, let them come. Come on. Thank God for heaven. Because the truth is, I couldn't go there. And you couldn't either had it not been for the blood of Jesus. Look at what Jesus says. I love this verse. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I'm not going to tease you like that. But I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. He is coming back. Come on, church. I will come again. I will receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. I was thinking this week about something. I was thinking, what if you could have a conversation with a child while that child was still in its mother's womb? Think about this with me. What if we could talk to a, a baby just a few days before it was born? And what if we could have a conversation? I would imagine the conversation would go like this. Uh, I, I would say to that baby, hey... In just a few more days, you're going to be born. I'd imagine that that baby would, would then ask, what is born? Well, right now, I would say, you're in your mother's belly. You're in her womb. And then I would imagine that that baby would say, what is a mother? <laughs> and what is a womb? And so then you would go on to say, right now... You are in your mother, you are conceived there, in her womb, and in a few days, you will leave her womb. That, that's what it means. You're going to leave her womb, you're going to be born, and you're going to open your eyes in a whole new world. And that baby would say, I don't know of a mother, I don't know the concept of being born, and the only world I know is the one I'm in right now. Can I tell you, that there is another world past here. We have a Father in heaven. I have not seen Him yet, nor have you. Just like that baby had not visually seen its mother yet, but there was a mother. All of us were in her womb at one time, right? Not in the same mother, but you had a mother, I had a mother. 
We were all in our mother at one time. There is a womb and all of us were born or we would not be here. And there is a father. I haven't seen his face yet, but there is a father. And because I've been born again, one day I'm going to open my eyes up and a whole new world is going to open up to me. And I cannot wait to experience that place called heaven. Called heaven. Come on up, Dave. Do you have somebody? today in heaven oh my goodness can you imagine being reunited with that child that you miscarried can you imagine what that regretful mother who had that baby aborted can you imagine what the reunion will be like in heaven Parents that have passed, grandparents that have passed, children that we've lost, friends, don't miss heaven. Don't miss heaven. Bow your head with me. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's message. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, if today you're watching and you're away from God, uh, you don't have a personal relationship with Christ, I'd love to pray for you. And right where you are, you can open your heart to Jesus and receive His grace and His mercy in your life. So if that's you, do me a favor right where you are. Just stop and repeat after me. Come on, bow your head if you can and, and let's pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank You for loving me. I thank You for going to the cross for me, for the wrong I did. I'm asking You to forgive me. I'm asking You to come into my life I'm asking you to wash me inside and out. I receive your love today. I receive your grace. Thank you for a new start. In Jesus' name, come on, say it with me. Amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer, I would love to celebrate with you. Do me a favor. Text the words, Welcome Home, to 94000. When you do that, you're going to get a digital copy, a link to a digital copy of our connection card. If you'll do me a favor and fill that out, I want to send you a copy of one of my latest books, Making a New Start. That's what you've done, and I promise you it'll be a blessing to you. So until next time, be blessed. Can't wait to see you again. Welcome home.